Fireball! Choo -choo 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 -choo. Hello my friends of Middle Earth and welcome to the Beyond Sunrise here on Mini Shanks and today we are going to cast a replay for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the page 2.22 on the beautiful map Firian Deal in the version 3.2 which was dropped recently and in order to update it you just need to run your BFME launcher and it will do the rest. It's a good against evil matchup, we like those with the Isengard player CCO versus the orange Gondor player Matthäus. So it's a very interesting opening. Um, but it might work out. Normally against good factions you want to open with your Uruk pit to get Uruks on the field faster. But maybe this one is going to be just fine as well. So basically Firin deal is a quite short map. The distance from this castle to this castle is pretty short. And the shorter the map is, the less valuable the mobility advantage will get. And for that reason it's better to go for the infantry because the horses they won't give you the advantage bonus you actually need unlike on a map like Westworld for example so the elven wood has been placed the uruks are still fighting this but the hobbit is hurting them big time and for that because he doesn't have any uruks upon the field yet uh, he has zero potential to defend the settlement this settlement is going to be taken down but he has one more so the good thing about this map for the evil factions is the second um mill is far away so even if the player can destroy this settlement he needs to walk a long distance to reach out to this one and he has double furnace opening so his eco should be just fine but this has been completely destroyed and the hobbit can also even cloak here you know to deny the isengard player to ever reclaim the settlement unlike uh, unless he will go for the vision of palantir to reveal the hobbit or recruit lords later on and lords has been nerfed also in this current version he was just too powerful and i mean he's still very powerful but he will be a bit more expensive from 1400 up to 1500 and that will make it kind of more difficult to recruit him crossbowman but the hobbit is hurting the hobbit actually have like a crazy dot chains so for that reason he's pretty good against arrows because the arrows can't hit him okay so the workers are going crazy by the way <laughs> obviously sitting level two aiming for the crossbow man there comes the war chant for the second time and this should be easy defense now because if you are outside on the elven wood you will have the damage and armor boost and the soldiers they are quite tanky with the shieldball formation and also the elven wood leadership they will get but still in the meantime, with a barracks opening, one, two, three blacksmiths and two farms, he's going for the infantry, which can be easily countered by going for the work pit. Isengard's eco is looking good, that's the rewarding part, and he doesn't need to get the Uruk pit to level two super fast because there is no horses he needs to fight against, okay? The farm has been finally taken down, and the Hobbit actually got killed. Yeah, Hobbit got killed. Now, he what? Hold, hold on a second. Where is the Hobbit at? I don't know where the Hobbit is, but it looks like he's alive because I can't see him here in the Citadel. But he went for the Boromir, and Boromir will be creeping this one. That's gonna almost bring him to level 4. There are plenty of creeps on the map Firian deal with a Walk layer and a Goblin layer around this location, around this location, and of course, we have also a Walk layer protecting those two farms. And we have a Goblin, I mean, pr plenty of creeps, okay? So basically, quite easy to level up your heroes. Because Isengard kind of got a really, really bad start into the game, okay? Because he wasn't even able to destroy any of the opponent farms. For that reason, that's the main reason why you should start with the Uruk Pit. Because with the Uruk Pit, you can get two Uruks to this location, war chant them together. And you can either creep this to get additional settlement, or you can just destroy the enemy farms and it will make him quite poor. Destroying this level 2 farms, which is the main resource income from the gun faction at the beginning of the game, will kind of throw him back like to the stone age okay so boromir should get the last hit he will get to level four level five also unlocks the horn of gondor it will stun them but again you know isengard can go for the vision of palantir to get the fear resistance and he actually got to level five that's dope again boromir is a very good hero now in the patch 2.22 he has also a brand new ability the glory of gondor you know he will be able to make bang for you and now every faction have like their ability to get pillage, okay? So Gondor has Boromir, Isengard has Lourdes, Mordor has Scavenger, the power point, and of course Rohan has Eoma, the horse lord of Rohan. And you know, you see, they are creeping quite decently. Also Faramir has been recruited. Isengard is playing it very, very slow. Didn't even go for Lourdes. 
Lourdes is of course the best anti-hero in the game. He has Lourdes up on the field now, but he's only level 1, almost level 2. And in order to be able to beat Faramir or Boromir, you need to get him to level 3. Because level 3 doesn't only give him a huge damage boost, which will make sure that you can 1v1 any of the Gondor heroes besides Gandalf, of course. But also, it will grant him the immunity to knockback, so which is kind of like a counter to Boromir. Because Boromir, if you don't know, has like a huge chance to knock you down. But there are some heroes that are immune to the knockbacks. And one of these heroes, of course, is Gandalf. You can't knock down Gandalf on from his horse. That's not possible. But Lourdes will also get it now when the Carnage is active. So Vorks have been recruited. That's going to be the first time we will see Isengard destroying the enemy farm. And it's going to be demolished to get money back. We have Archer Range Level 2, Fire Arrows purchased, and Barracks Level 2 for the Tower Guards. Tower Guards, of course, will be like a counter to the enemy Vork Riders, okay? So we have three combos, Boromi Leadership and Faramir, almost level 4. He needs to be level 5 to get to unlock the Armor Leadership. And also, of course, Fear Immunity, but again, this is not very important against Isengard, because Isengard have no fear abilities, okay? So you can't fear the enemy units. Uh, level 1, Heavy Armor purchased, Fire Arrows almost purchased. So it's going to be kind of difficult, I think, for Isengard. Because he doesn't have an army yet. He doesn't have an army yet. He has no upgrades yet. He didn't buy the, this one. But he bought Armor and I think also Fire Arrows. Let me check. Yes. No, he didn't. He didn't. He only bought Armor. What? Kind of confusing. But he has Outpost. Ah, he's... Okay, never mind. I'm blind. He has this around this location. That's why. So he's going for all the upgrades, outpost control, one, two, three, four settlements. Isengard should be quite rich. And you see, that's the difference between infantry against Cav. Because with Cav, you could deny Isengard those settlements. But with the combos, as they are quite slow, you can't really contest the map control. Okay, that's going to be a big fight, boys. I mean, it's going to be risky. And Isengard has to definitely unlock the Palantir. Because if you don't have Palantir, that's what's gonna happen. You will get stunned, you can't fight. But he has no power points. He's gonna use Warchant, they can't move, they are now level 2, they are free. And it's smart to kind of fight around this location. It's also a mistake from Isengard to go for the, you know, for the industry. You should you should go for the, for the Tainted Land instead, you know. Because you are against Gondor, he might place another Elven Wood. And then you will be just ready to cover this. Because with the outpost and those four settlements you have, you don't need the extra money from your industry that much. I mean, it's still great to get additional money to get, a, for example, more army and also eventually go later on for Saruman. But you need to kind of think about the current situation. So here's a tower guard soldier combination, but the Uruks are way too strong with the forge bleeds. And you see that's a counter to this. So Ur Uruks are the strongest infantry in the game. And soldiers are way weaker compared to the Uruks. And tower guards are weak against swordmen anyway. And you can see in those situ situations, in those skirmishes, one Uruk with the forged blades and heavy armor can actually take care of one soldier and tower guard combination. Okay, three combos and a tower guard. Boromir has almost level 6. And he has also the Horn of Gondor available for the next big fight. And Faramir is still almost only level 4. But the Vorks are doing a good job for the map control. The unfortunate part for Isengard is that, you know, Lourdes is only level 3. So, in terms of leadership, he has only the Vorchant, which is still better than what Boromir has to offer. But remember, Boromir, as long as he's alive, will give you leadership, while Vorchant is active only for a minute. So, after a minute, you have zero leadership until you get Saruman recruited, which is about to happen, okay? So again, with Saruman, also units are going to level up way faster. Now we have level 6, you can see he's making money. And, you know, using those units. Oh my goodness. Using those units to actually clear the map. But again, that's going to make this outpost kind of unprotected. And if the way you want to play against combos is... Boom, fireball, son. Look at the range, man. The fireball. The way you want to play against this is you want to punish him for the for the immobility, okay? So basically, you always need to adapt your playstyle to the playstyle of your opponent. So you see him around this area with his heroes and combos and tower guards, and you know he has potentially little to nothing around this outpost. And that's the outpost you want to commit to. And again, not only with orcs, but also with like eventually 
the Uruks, okay? So one Uruk, one Vork could actually easily clean this up, no problem. And if he doesn't demolish those buildings in time, you would actually also get a lot of power points. The power supply we are looking for is going to be the Freezing Rain. Freezing Rain is normally and usually not very impactful versus, you know, Gondor. But this Gondor is going for the infantry, for leadership with Boromir and Faramir. And for that reason, Freezing Rain is definitely the power point you are aiming for. Crossbow man, Uruks, money for Isengard is looking dope. And I think Gondor is kind of kind of expecting Isengard to have Tainted Land. That's why he's not using Elvin Wood anymore. So the only Elvin Wood he has is at this spot. Okay, so he's going for the Outpost. Fireball one more time. It's a it's a mistake to fight around the Outpost, to be honest with you. Because he has Statue Leadership for additional armor and damage. There comes the Horn, but fear resistant. Beautiful Warm Tongue from Sarima! He has Boromir Leadership. And what is he doing? He stole him. Actually, it was a beautiful run, 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 run. You need to blast him now. You need to blast him now, not the best blast. Where is the pike? Where is the pike? You don't have pike. Oh boy, there is no way he can survive this. He's pressing S, he's trying to buy some time. But I think he's gonna go down to the Rohirrim. Rohan takes his revenge. Actually not. Faramir was the one who killed him. That's even worse because Faramir got now to level 5. Even more leadership. I mean, the warm tongue time was pretty lit. But I think it was kind of too dangerous because you have no backup. I mean, he was expecting to get away with Saruman because Saruman is way faster than, Saruman, uh, than Faramir. I mean, because if Saruman keeps running a straight line, Faramir can't catch up to him. But he didn't expect to Rohirrim summon. And you need to hope for the best, but always be prepared for the wars, okay? For that reason, it's always good to have some backup. Even normal units with leadership with War Chant, they can kind of bully those or hit him, no problem. Lord's almost level 5. He's going to use Cripple to kill one of them in one shot. That's going to unlock his leadership. Saruman has to be revived as soon as possible. And finally, we see Isengard going for the combos. That's what he needed to do all along. Because with Lord's Saruman and War Chant, he will out-damage the... You know, Gondor combos big time. It's all about the hero placement. It's you should you shouldn't go for a greedy move. So you don't you don't need to go for a cripple unless you have to. Keep your lords and Saruman behind your combos. You will have 60% damage, 50% armor from Saruman and Lords all alone. And with War Chant, your damage goes up to 110% and your armor goes up to 100 percent Okay? So the amount of leadership Gondor can have right now is only 60% damage from this dude and 50% armor from this dude. I know when he gets to level 7, it will unlock additional 60% damage, but even then, he has 120% damage leadership, but only 50% armor. You still have way more than that. So you can out-damage and out-sustain the Gondor combos. I mean, the good thing about the good factions, in this case Gondor or Rohan, is of course they have a well, so whenever they take a bad fight, when they can survive the fight, they can get to back to the well here and heal up to full HP. Here you should use the Horn of Gondor, in my opinion. Whenever you catch like a warg like this, you can stun them and then get three power points. Isengard is moving on. One, two, three, four combos. Two crossbowmen, lots of firepower, but Saruman once again going for a greedy move. The second evil approach, Faramir is here to chunk him. There is no Gandalf here. Oh, he has Gandalf on the field, by the way, somewhere. All right. Okay, there is Gandalf. What you want to do in those situations is you don't want to show your Gandalf for now. You know, let him intentionally cripple your Faramir or Boromir. The second Lords has crippled you, you know, then you can commit. And also, what Isengard did, a mystique, is to use Warchan before the fight actually started. You know, when the fight didn't start yet, you don't need to use Warchan, because when you use Warchan too early, your opponent can disengage and wait for the one minute duration. And the second the duration is over, now you can commit again. Because he knows now that your fireball is on cooldown for the next 20 seconds, and that your Warchan is on cooldown for the next two minutes, okay? It's all about playing around the cooldowns. He's going for the workshop. That's going to be a big counter to this. But he has still works. He's also going for the siege works. He has a big army, by the way. Oh my goodness, that's a big army. And you want to use also the wedge formation for more DPS. It's all about maximizing your DPS. Ganov is also only for mortal sport here, by the way. I don't think he can approach to this army. 
especially when loot is around. Fireball! Palanti has been used. Saruman is zooming away, but that will again mean that the army has no leadership. But Gandalf got crippled. He can use the shield bubble. He's gonna use heal first. He's fully committing into the melee range, and Gandalf can blast this, but he doesn't wanna do it. Just blast them. He's gonna get killed. Saruman is trying to disengage Kite from the Rohirrim. Everybody is on Saruman. He's running it down. Now, kill the heroes first. Kill the heroes first, and you want to kill the squishy heroes first. The Warchan, you can see, if he would have Warchan from the beginning, this fight would not even be close. Lourdes has taken down Boromir, just like in the films. Massive battle. Lourdes killing heroes left, right. Lourdes solo killed all the heroes, but the army still got crushed. He is now trying to make it out, but he can't. The level 5 combo from Gondor is hitting like an absolute truck. But 12 power points in the bank for Aizen and Gondor has now the Eagle Alliance special summon. I mean, different meta, you know. The 2.22 was trying successfully, so improved the impact of the infantry units, which was kind of meh in the patch 1.06 or 1.03, the last EA official patch. And for that reason, it's always nice to see a different thread, which is also kind of working out very well. But I think if, if something, then the fight could have been played way better from Isengard. Now it's debatable if it's worth to go for a fireball when you know you will get chunked big time. Or if it would be better to, to just keep Saruman behind your combos to get him additional combat experience and armor. And use him like a mobile statue. Because at this point of the game, there is too much firepower from Gondor. The second he sees your Saruman, Mateusz is a good player. He will... He knows he has to focus him down, okay? And Fireball and every ability from Saruman will make him stop for a few seconds. The second you cast it, you can't move away super fast again. And, you know, at least he will get Faramir's warning arrow off. And that will chunk you. Rain is available. And we have Eagles available. So Eagles, of course, a big counter to heroes. In this case, we are talking about Lords or Saruman. If he can manage to kill the heroes... The army quantity doesn't matter because PFME 1 is a game that is designed to make quality over quantity. But my lord, there is no such forest. <laughs> Ten thousands. Okay, so we have actually a huge army of Ballista have been also built up from the Siege Forex. The Gunner player is bringing those trebuchet. They are way stronger compared to the Ballista because they can get upgrades. They can get the Firestone that is going to hard counter those immobile units, okay? But we will see, we will see. Ballista is shooting generally faster. The projectile in the air is like landing instantly. While you can see the projectile of the trebuchet or catapult, you can kind of try to move aside, which is kind of hard. Oh! Q, 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 Q. Okay, you one shot at the eagle, but did Saruman die? No, 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 he didn't die. You also, you wanna. Okay. Oh, blast it! But he, he got crippled. He's using the heal bubble. It's gonna give him extra tankiness. But I think he will. He will. Oh, he has heal. Heal? No, he didn't heal him. I think he knew he will die anyway. Lourdes is giving him additional leadership. He's trying to destroy the enemy trebuchet. He has been used to keep Boromir safe. He's gonna use the Horn of Gondor. Where is the Palantir to counter this? They are stunned. They can't fight. And the Rohirrim summon will be used once again. Is this gonna be like a deja vu situation? He's gonna stick a couple of the Rohirrim. Now the Rohirrim have to be sent to destroy the trebuchet. But the Ballista is doing the trick as well. Isengard fully committing to the fight, which might be a mistake. The Rohirrim are going to try to trample the enemy units but what they should be doing instead is to destroy the trebuchet because that's what really hurts Isengard the most but this time unlike last time he was able to save his heroes and the second Saruman gets level 8 it's gonna unlock his will of Saruman that will give you the potential to go for the risky place because then you have like a heal as you know a weaker heal because it doesn't heal up to full HP it would kind of be super broken for Isengard especially for a hero like Saruman with the warm tongue um, but it will still heal him like almost 50% HP, okay? Trebuchet is coming. Boromir is level 7, has every ability unlocked. But I think Faramir and also his mentor Gandalf have been killed for the second time in this game. Saruman is healing up slowly but surely. The combos are recovering also slowly but surely. And Firestone has been purchased. You can see the, it's chunking. A level 3 furnace is the tankiest you know, tankiest <laughs> resource building you can actually get in this game. The one 
Uruk can't do much. The level 7 or level 6 combos are extremely powerful. And this, this dude should be doing nothing else but scout this area and try to snipe every single trebuchet coming out. Because trebuchet or catapults or any siege weapon really in this game is now feeding lots of power points when you lose them. But Gondor has almost done it, okay? Gondor has almost the Offbreaker special summon. Awaitable, that will... You know, this is like the ultimate cheat. A cheat. Like when you play, for example, Yu-Gi-Oh! And your opponent is opening with an Exodia hand, okay? Five pieces of Exodia. That's how the special summons are feeling like in this game. EOD and Balrog are way too powerful. We have been trying our best to make them weaker, less impactful, longer cooldowns. But you, I mean, you can't, you can, of course, make them even more weaker. But I think they are, they are supposed to be strong, right? But yeah, we shall see. Almost 10 power points in the bank. Huge army for Gondor. He has Faramir leadership, Boromir leadership, Gandalf. You can't get any stronger. The only power spike you can get is a bit more levels on your units. And of course, also Gandalf getting level 10. And few more levels on the heroes will make them also a bit more tanky, a bit more damage. But at the end of the day, when you unlock all your abilities from your, from your Boromir and Faramir, you can't really get much stronger than that. Level 6, Gandalf the White. It's also a very important leadership, by the way. 50% armor that skills with the armor from Faramir. So, and also on the Alvin Wood, your combos are going to be extremely tanky. However, Fireball is still hitting very hard. Now it's a very awkward situation because he has almost AUD. The second he gets it, he can use it to kill all of this army. And this army, what he has right now, is definitely capable of winning the game. But keep in mind that Isengard is able to get a power points from losing units. So we know. Gondor has AOD pretty much unlocked. But we see Isengard sitting on almost 15 power points. Fireball has been getting him half a power point. There comes the AOD. And I want you to focus on the power points from Isengard. Is he's losing the army. And that's the main reason. He's gonna blast some of them. Got a whole power point, almost 18. I think he was kind of being prepared for this. It's like an army around this location. Lots of war riders. And the AOD is trying to catch them. But of course, the calf is outrunning AOD big time. And with the Palantir, they are zooming. Now, Gondor is fully committing to the battle. Isengard still needs two whole power points. Can he get it though? But even if he can get it, remember you can't use AOD or Balrog rider inside the castle. So you can summon it only here. And then he can disengage from this. And Cloudbreak has been used. There comes the Vombo combo. Boom, chakalaka. And Gandalf is proving that he is the superior wizard of Middle-earth, ladies and gentlemen. The Warwicks, they are looking for a potential. They are looking for an opening. But I think even though they have like zero, uh, you know, zero pikes, it's still like they have like crazy levels on them. And Palan, uh, yeah, they have also the, only the whole ability and no war chant. They are still trampling decently. He has now the power points he needed to get to the Balrog summon. Ganav got crippled. Will he summon a, a Balrog here to kill Ganav just like in the films? I mean, in, in the films, actually, Balrog didn't really kill. But I think in this game, this is not a film. I'm a servant of the secret fire. <laughs> the bubble! <laughs> Oh, you don't want to do this. Oh, you don't want to do this. Oh, Gandalf. Gandalf. He actually got an Easter light off. It's, I respect the attempt, okay? He was trying to go for it. I respect the attempt. So when Gandalf is standing still, the shield bubble will block most of the damage from the VIP, okay? But when Gandalf is casting ability, then he will get one-shotted. The Eagles are dealing magic damage, which is the weakness of the powerful weapons uh, or summons like AUD and Balrog. They are not immortals, but they have like they are like taking zero damage from any damage besides magic. That's why also the explosive mine, for example, can kill Balrog. Balrog Slayer! Boromir killed the Balrog and using for Gondor! For Gondor! He got the last it off, man! <laughs> Lord is like, come here, Boromir. Is he gonna die? Yeah, he's actually hitting really hard. Oh, you killed my brother like this. I won't let you live. And he's getting the kill on Lourdes, getting to level 10. Isengard has lots of money. But what's the money good for if you are sitting on 20 command points without even having 
a citadel you can use to get your heroes back into the game he has a siege war it's a uruk pit that's all he got he has zero settlements outside zero lumber mills that's why also this is going to be quite useless he has no way of making money and the only unit he has is this one and this one uruk over here recover you know recovering but I appreciate the fact that he's fighting until the very end. This was a close fight. I think he, sh he was feeding too many power points to Isengard. Um, you know, Isengard was feeding too many power points to Gondor. And I would... Look, in those situations, it's kind of, it's, it kind of feels bad, man, to use, like... You know, to see AOD, okay? I wanted to see the big clash between the huge Gondor army against huge Isengard army. But AOD is kind of ruining the fan, fun in this game, okay? So... Maybe we need to make the AUD. Guys, quick question to you in the comment section down below. Should we raise the power points requirements for AUD and Balrog? Right now, you need 10 power points for AUD and 20 power points for Balrog. Should we make it like 12 for AUD and 24 for Balrog? You always need to have like a double. Why? Because again, evil factions are able to get power points from losing units. For example, Mordor, if you have like 4 or 5 orc pits and you continuously lose orcs, you will get power points. While good factions can only get power points from killing stuff, evil can get from killing stuff and also from losing stuff. It's gonna be the push for the end of the game. Gondor was so rich that he was even able to buy this. He has also marketplace. You can see the glow on the blacksmiths for increased resources. The last building has been destroyed. That's gonna be the end of the game. Sisu has been defeated, and Mateusz is the winner as Gondor versus Isengard. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like to this video and also subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck, and as always, ladies and gentlemen, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.